Hi, this is Eileen Castellano. Welcome to this High Vibrational Living Telesummit. And I've got an expert with me today, Melissa Binkley. Today we're gonna to be talking about the high vibrational light, which is to align your purpose to the real you and create a life that is overwhelming with true joy, passion, and fulfillment. And so I have Melissa Binkley with me, and Melissa Binkley is a, she's a humanitarian on a mission to help society to transcend through trauma to a new level of consciousness. She is the creator and founder of the Intuitive Intelligence Academy. She is Intuitive Intelligence Trainer, Certified Mastery Transformational Coach, Soul and Business Strategist, number one best-selling author, Melissa is a dynamic, highly sought after international speaker and thought leader known for her ability to transcend limiting beliefs. She uses several techniques that fuse science and spirituality, personal development, and the quantum field. In 2014, Melissa developed her own mode of spiritual transformational process called intuitive intelligence. Melissa has shared the stage with Marianne Williamson and Dr. Demartini, and is also a teacher for the Institute for Integrative Nutrition and on the advisory committee for the Women's Economic Forum. Thank you so much for being with me today, Melissa. Oh, thank you so much for having me, Eileen. I'm super excited. So we're going to be talking a little bit about high vibrational living today and what high vibrational life or living means to clients and to people that you serve as well as the people that I serve. So do you want to tell me a little bit about what is high vibrational living for you? Yeah, absolutely. So for me, the experience of high vibrational living is about coming out of the norm of the society that we live in and being able to have an experience of, um, of acceptance and awareness and gratitude um, for even what we call the crappy things, right? Like the things that aren't even great. Like when you get to a place where you start to understand and learn that the way that you live on a daily basis, what we call high vibration or, you know, our energy levels being up, our experience being in a different plane, that a plane of awakening, we allow ourselves to have this, uh, this, you know, a connection in this experience with one another that is much different than what normal normal people are currently experiencing and living at you know we with a society that's been super traumatized by recent events and um, living in a traumatic society we have got to um, as uh, you know beings learn how to shift our own energy to live high vibe to live in a vibration that is um, above what most other people are doing and by doing that we can allow ourselves to um, help our communities to heal, help the people around us to heal just by being different for ourselves. So high vibe living is not about um, what you do in the world or what you're out there doing or experiencing, but how you're being within yourself and healing your own trauma and healing through your own work. And by being differently and having that experience, you actually uh, create a force around you that allows others to be the same. Absolutely. That's very well said exactly how I feel and exactly what my experience has been also with working with clients for so many years is that it's something that we get to live. It's not something that we just do or, or separate ourselves from. It's something that comes from within us. And so that is the big connection that happens when we're looking at how our vibration is doing and how we feel about ourselves. Because at the same time that we're trying to be on purpose and people talk about being purposeful or on purpose, and some people get very irritated even and frustrated when they're talking about these terms because to them is they, it's, it's something that they have to become when the reality is, is that we have this vibration, this higher vibration when we're in passionately and in love with what we do, how we are, how we show up, the things that we create, how we express ourselves with others. So there's a lot of healing that happens in order for us to step into this falling in love with ourselves again or being passionately aligned with what we do and what we create. And so that's what I believe is what purpose is, that once we're finally in that stage or in that space in our life, we get to experience this, this high and which is that high vibrational life that we're talking about. And then we get to step into our purpose, but it can't happen unless we've done the work or unless we've experienced 
what it is that we love so much about ourselves and the things that we do and that we get to create so that we can then expand and teach and share with others. Mm -hmm. So how do you apply that in your work, Melissa? Well, I love that you do the work, right? Like I think that's one of the most important things because um, I believe the number one key to uh, getting into the high vibrational life and living that and being it so that you can actually find your purpose because most people when they're stuck in a trauma and trauma or stuck in their patterns or stuck in their challenges they they're like purpose what do you mean purpose i'm doing what i should do like my parents told me i should do this or you know a family says i should do this they don't even understand that they can have a purpose so the first step is to understand how to heal your past how to heal the, the things that you're, you know, your shadow side, your ego, the, the soul work that you came to do in this world so that you can find your purpose. And um, so we, we get presented with these experiences, these challenges, these traumas throughout our life so that we can go in and work on and heal those pieces of ourselves so that we can become whole so we can find our purpose. So one of the things that I think is the most powerful in that is really understanding how do you go back in, how do you, um, whether it's into your past, into the womb, into be even another experience or another lifetime, how do we go in and start to heal generationally, um, you know, physically, mentally, emotionally, uh, spiritually, all of these different things that have shown up because we chose to be in this body. We chose to have this experience, right? We're in earth school here. We came to, we came to earth to go, to go to school and, and, the, and it's a spiritual curriculum. And so we're sitting in this spiritual curriculum of the, you know, what do we do? And so the first piece is being able to look honestly at your life, waking up, like what I believe that waking up piece is, is waking up to your own experience of, oh, this isn't how it has to be. How do I go back and heal you know, um, that, that first thing, you know, so we do people talk about that awakening. And I think the first step of awakening is just acknowledgement, acknowledging that you're, that you have, a, that there is a different way and then going in and doing the work of saying, okay, what is the first thing that's going to change something in my life? Like where, where does that come from? Is it from my childhood? Is it from a traumatic experience? Is it where those things are so that you can start to shift those negative memories that we have coded in our brains right. um, start to shift those memories into a neutral experience so that, so that we stop reacting to them all the time, like reacting over and over. Cause that's what happens. We just create a pattern and we don't even know we're, we are living our lives 95% unconscious mm -hmm. and, um, and we're just living off a pattern. So only 5% of what we think we're doing is, is a conscious creation. So awakening to that consciousness so that we can go back in and heal. Absolutely. And the importance of having the awakening and the awareness also steps us into having to accept it because the acceptance step is so powerful when we get to say, you know what, I choose not to be this way anymore. I choose not to feel this anymore. Or you know what, I want a different experience than what I'm experiencing right now. The acceptance of that, of just saying, yes, okay, so it's information. This is what has happened to me. And we get away from the blame game, right? We get away mm -hmm. from the shame because a lot of times we we get entrapped in that space when we're feeling ashamed of ourselves, guilty. How did I allow this to happen to me? How could this, how could somebody do this to me, right? And then we end up being the victims. And, or if not, we take that and we start blaming everybody else and we become very angry and very resentful. And all of those different emotions begin to hurt us. And the, and the more we try to, to think that we're getting some, that we're getting ahead of ourselves or that we're actually getting some progress, there's no progress in that at all. On the contrary, we're just stifling our own growth, which is where we hear a lot of people saying, oh, no, I'm stuck. I want to get out of being stuck. And the stuckness, if that's even a word, is about us really repositioning ourselves and deciding, making a very valid choice, a very determined decision that we no longer want to be who we used to be so that we can now begin to create a life according to our terms not according to what everybody else in society and family have told us we have to do. I know in my own experience, that's exactly the trap I was in for so many years. I became the student, the entrepreneur. I went to grad school. I got my own private practice. I had my children, my, my family, stayed in a marriage that wasn't even conducive or, or good for me, but I stayed anyway because it was the right thing to do, the right thing according to society, not the right thing for Eileen. And so, Unless I had gone through all of that experience and I was able to wake up one day and realize I didn't want that experience anymore, I don't really think I would have gotten to this point, Melissa, because it, I had to go through the trenches 
and realized that I was in this, in this place of doom, that the only person that could get me out of that was myself. And to step into finding out, okay, so what do I love? What makes me passionate? Where does that come from? How can I feel that about myself? Because, right, it starts with the whole healing of your own soul, of your own essence. And then you get to start to propel and move into the purpose. Yeah. But you can't really skip all of it to get there, right? There's a big, yeah. there's a, there's a step. big, big thing there. And, and that's that shift of going from a survivor, right? The victim and the survivor yes. to being a thriver, to being someone that can actually yes. on purpose design their life. Like, like think about it, how many of you out there actually design your life. Like I used to just let things go and flow and like whatever happens, happens. And now I consciously say, you know what? I, as a thriver in my life who has survived uh, sexual violence, domestic violence, yeah, all sorts of different things, I now choose to specifically design the experience that I want to create in my life yes. and have that lead into my purpose instead of being the victim of everybody else out there doing that. And that's a huge shift. That's another shift in living a high vibrational life is no longer it's stepping off the victim triangle, right, that they call it yes. like the you know, and, and stepping into the space of, you know, no, I am, I have gratitude for the experience. I have gratitude for what happened and I choose to design my life in a different way. It's like falling in love and getting in a relationship um, and not consciously thinking about what's going to happen five years down the road, right? It's not, you know, I mean, so many people do that and all of a sudden they have these relationships and then they wonder why they fail after a year or two because they let the emotion yes. get ahead of the experiences. So we do the same thing in that like victim uh, that victim or survivor mode where we just are letting the, the experiences happen for us instead of taking a stand and saying, no, I choose to have a different experience and, and thrive through this and really have an experience so that I can live high vibrationally, so that I can live in this, in this piece. And so it's literally about designing your life instead of allowing it just to happen to you. Yes. And that is what the empowerment term that everybody throws out, right? We hear it all, all the time. Empowerment, we want you to be empowered, to feel empowered. That's exactly what this is. That's when you get to take your power back. And sometimes it may not even feel like a good role. It feels like something that we're very responsible. There's a lot of accountability because now it's all on us, right? We don't get to get to be taken off the hook from our responsibility and what has happened, not 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 saying that any type of abuse by any means is something that we deserved but unless we went through that we can't really say you know what i choose for that to never happen to me again i choose to go with what i deserve and what i want to allow to happen and to be the experience that i want and to create the life that i want not based on what all these other circumstances have created for me Right. And you put it very nicely when that whole separation of, you know, this is what they did, right? We want to just, no, let's just own it because when we can own it, we can fix it. We can change it. We can grow from it. Right. right. We are 100% responsible for our reaction to the event, right? Like the event is actually a neutral experience. The event, um, yeah, it is, it is what it is. It's neutral. It's our reaction that creates our world. And so if we can admit to the fact that where we are right now in our lives is 100% because of our reaction to our circumstances and accept that we have gotten ourselves into the situation where we're at right now, that's the most empowering place that you can be. Instead of being the victim of he or she did this to me and that's why I'm here, you're saying, no, this thing happened, neutral right. event, and I chose to react in this way, yeah. and therefore, this is my experience. I always, I, I talk about this from the stage often because I, I took an experience, I was brutally raped at the age of 17, and um, that was after years of uh, trauma and other things that had already happened in my life, and I talk about in my 20s, my meaning that I made of it, the experience that I chose to have led me into drugs and eating disorders and uh, self-mutilation, and all of these different types of experiences, even though I was a high achiever and I was graduating top of my class, I had these hidden things. And so I was making this meaning about myself. Um, and so when I finally came through and healed that part of myself, I now will use that, that platform and that rape and the things that happened to me as an experience to have built an international organization that helps people heal, right? And so I, I chose to make the meaning of what happened to me shift and by doing that my experience is shifting and therefore i'm shift shifting other people's experiences and helping them and so 
Um, you know, when we say 100% responsibility, I, I know that people have a real challenge with that sometimes because they're like, how am I supposed to be responsible for the, you know, um, being abused as a child or the violence? And I, I get it because I've been there too. And I'm not saying that you're responsible for what happened to you. I'm saying you're responsible for how you choose as an adult to live in your experience after it's already happened. Are you still living in from the past and in the past and allowing it to affect you and every decision that you make? Or are you going to choose to be empowered and heal that? so that you can make new decisions that actually move your life forward and live high vibrationally. Absolutely, Melissa. We all get to choose. We all get to make those decisions. I know for myself as a therapist, as a family therapist, working with clients, especially with couples and, and parents, and finding myself going through my own abuse and my own situations in my own couple, in my own marriage with my, my partner, who I was in a couple with at the, at the time, it was, it was trenching. It, it was, it was, it was heart trenching to know that I was giving advice to clients that were going through something similar or worse, and I was in it too. And so that whole separation was making me sick. There was, I was going through experiences with my thyroid. I was getting kidney stones very frequently um, because of the fear that I was in it, that I was experiencing that I didn't even know how to channel. I didn't even know how to express. I didn't even know who to talk to because of the shame and the guilt and the, how could this happen to me? And here I am, I'm supposed to be an expert in the field and know how to work with clients who are in a couple, who are in a relationship. And I was hiding and, and not really realizing the impact of what that was having on me. And so what would I do is I would just work more hours and I would just look for other distractions, other things that were keeping me busy, my four kids, running the business, seeing more clients. And it came to a day where it was, it was a breakdown. It was me just looking at myself and realizing I couldn't continue to do this to myself anymore. And I didn't want to be in that place where I wasn't even in integrity with me. And so we come to this place where we have to make a decision. And many times those are the, the, what they call the rock bottom. That's you know, the darkness of the soul. Those are moments that we have where there are turning points, but they're also defining moments in our life where we get to decide, you know what? There has to be something better than this. This can't be all there is to life. Mm -hmm. and, and, but in that, that's where I felt the seeping in of that high vibration. Because when I was doing meditation, I was in that place and it was like, oh, wow, I want to stay here. And I, I swear, I think I was in a meditative state for a really long time just because it was my... It was a way that I could feel that I was whole again, that there was still a connection in my soul that had, had value and there was something so much greater. And so little by little, that's where I began to step into connecting to what I was passionate about, which was helping empower women and teaching them from a place of, I've been there too, rather than being the expert or the person that was looking at them and not looking at both of us are looking at all of us are not looking within me and mm -hmm. so i know that that high vibration sometimes starts to seep in and we've got to catch it when it does so that we realize that oh i want more of that and less of this and so little by little like you said you know we've come from trauma and abuse that there has to be that that allowance that acceptance that we can just allow ourselves to experience something better and different without the victim, the victimization that a lot of times we place upon ourselves. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and being in a space where you can start to tap into that kind of world, right? Like it doesn't take a lot. It takes these little simple techniques. There's a, you know, not, it's not like you were asking you here to overhaul your life. I know it can sound really scary, right? But yeah. there's, and, and this is why Eileen is so amazing at that. Like if you need the help, she can help you with it. But there's little techniques and there's things that you can start to do that will allow you to shift your experience. Like she said, she sat in the meditation. And I know for some people, meditation, like meditation, that sounds kind of scary. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's, there's other techniques and ways that you can just start to shift that will allow you to, um, to start to connect that heart and the brain together and do those types of things so that you can actually um, connect in and you can have an experience. You can move things and from there start to heal and start to, to do that. This isn't, this isn't like brain neuroscience. It's not really hard work here. There's, you know, it's simple techniques and simple things that if you start to do on a daily basis are going to really shift your life. Don't you agree? 
Absolutely. So what would be one technique that you would encourage um, the viewers to see, or the, the viewers that are here watching this for them to, um, to apply? Yeah, I, I will just want to share with you, with you my heart breathing exercise. It's one of the techniques that we teach in uh, the Intuitive Intelligence Certification. And this is something you can use with kids as young as three years old. Um, I've used it with um, when I've done uh, human trafficking work and, uh, you know, with survivors and teach them so at such a little age. And it's really simple, but it's super powerful because we our hearts have an electromagnetic field. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times um, it's like, think about if you unplug from electricity, there's no, there's no electricity running through it. That's what we've actually done by closing down our hearts is we are unplugging from the field, from the universe, from each other and shutting down. And so what we want to do is we want to plug ourselves back in so that we can become a divine channel now, you know, for divine providence to be able to create that space. And by plugging back into the electromagnetic field and by using our heart energy, which is 5,000 times uh, our electromagnetic field is 5,000 times stronger than our brain. Um, that will allow us this experience. So it's really simple. I like to close my eyes when I do it. And you just, you, when you do, when you start to imagine that you see like a green or a gold or a pink light and you're breathing in and you're breathing in through your heart for like five. And then when you, as you're pulling it up, you're going to pull it up to the top of your, uh, what we call the crown chakra, which is the pineal gland. And you're just going to hold and squeeze for five at the top and then breathe right back out through that heart chakra. And you're gonna do that again, imagining that that breath is coming in and holding at the top. And as you're doing that, you're squeezing the pineal gland, you're activating the crystals in there, which is the antenna to the field and being able to have an experience. And then breathe out again. And as you do this, you want to start to feel a feeling of appreciation or gratitude or love. Mm -hmm. And that will allow that energy field to open. And if you do just three minutes of this every day for a couple of weeks, it will shift the energy in your body and you will automatically start to step into high vibe on a regular basis. Very nice. I could feel the high vibe, the high yeah. vibration already. That's so great. That's amazing. Thank you for that one, Melissa. You're welcome. Yes. So living a life of joy and peace is what everybody wants, right? And so how would you say that living in this high vibrational life, how, how would you say that creating this new life also equates to living a life of joy? Mm, wow, what a great question. So the, the actual vibration of love and joy is, is a higher vibration. Just think about it. When you're sad and angry, what do you feel like, right? Like, like if you have an experience, think of, think an angry thought, you know, your body slumps, you feel like you literally feel pulled down. But when you think, when you feel a joyful moment in your life, maybe when you had your baby or first time you got, when you got your wedding day or your daughter graduated from college or you graduated, right? Like whatever this is, you start to feel that joy. You can automatically feel the difference in your body. You can feel that experience. And so um, I believe that, you know, joy and peace are, are synonymous with high vibration. Like it's when you're in that space, your body feels different, your mind feels different, your heart feels different, and you automatically are able to tap into joy. Uh, and so um, they, you know, it's like, it's like two, two sides of the same coin. You know, yeah. when you have joy, you feel high vibration. If you stay in high vibration, you'll have joy. Like, you know, and that becomes an internal experience instead of it being something of an external. So many people are seeking joy and happiness from some external thing. Like once I have this, once right. I do this, I will be this, right? And instead, by being high vibration, you're creating joy from the inside right. instead of from the outside. So that, I think that high vibration or living that life um, is synonymous with inner joy. Like that's where it comes from. That's the piece, inner love, inner joy, inner appreciation, inner gratitude. That's that whole vibration. You know, love is 500, what they call 500 and above. Mm -hmm. And so it's like living in that space, you actually create that experience internally instead of having to seek it externally. That's great, Melissa. The description you gave is phenomenal. That happens also when, when clients or people that I work with, and probably this has happened to you too, even people that we know, right? We could be around somebody who's depressed or sad. And what do they do? They slump, they walk, they look down all the time. And that's, that's, definitely their body and their body language expressing how they feel inside. So if we take the opposite or the contrary of that, and we realize that if we're filled with joy and acceptance and we love ourselves and we love our life, all that we can project is coming from that same energy of the inner joy, the peace. And from there, our vibration 
not only will be high or higher, but will stay high most of the time. Because the whole idea of being in this high vibrational life is to be in it and then be able to keep it and maintain it so that we don't feel those big drops every time that we're doing that roller coaster ride, right? We feel like there's things that we have no control over and we want to just stay steady, just stay in that, in that peaceful mode where we know that everything that's showing up is exactly what's in divine plan for us. Yeah. And so acceptance, awakening, awareness, everything we've talked about today is so empowering to get everyone on that place where they get to enjoy a life that they get to create that is filled with love, with peace, fulfillment, with joy. And so that is the high vibrational life. I love talking about this. I just light up talking about it because oh, it's yeah. so, so good. <laughs> <laughs> so do you want to tell us a little bit about the gift that you're going to be giving, your free gift? Yeah, absolutely. So my free gift is a 13 minute meditation. It's an intuitive intelligence meditation around healing the parts of you that have maybe been traumatized or you have a challenge and you can't quite integrate those things together. There's some beautiful didgeridoo hand band music in the background and I walk you and guide you through this just short, powerful meditation into healing a part of yourself. So I hope you really enjoy it. Yay, I love meditation. You know me and meditation. So yeah. introducing meditation to somebody who's never done it or for somebody to actually have that experience, that's, that's so amazing. Thank you for that, Melissa. Now, let's, um, in order to close the program, I want your recommendation. What do you recommend to our viewers is the best or the quickest way for them to experience this high vibrational life? Yeah, I, I have to go back to the heart breathing. I think it's by far the quickest and the, the, the fastest way to um, that is starting to breathe through the heart and allowing that um, that experience to happen. And then when when you, um, when you have a negative thought or when you have something come to you, centering back into opening up into that breath. I you know I that for me is my best the best tip. I have so many different ones, mm -hmm. but um, I you know I consider that the five second cure. Uh, or, you know, right, because what it's doing is, is it's creating a connection from your, from your heart to your brain and um, putting you into a, a state um, that gets you out of a beta state. And beta is where stress lies. Our beta wave brain, brain waves is where all the stress is. And that's our normal conscious thinking. So by doing that breath, you're automatically switching your brain out of that and allowing it to heal, um, which will automatically shift your vibration. Awesome. Yes. So we want to encourage everybody to use your technique and to also be uh, very grateful that they're going to have this opportunity to listen to your meditation. And mm -hmm. so I'm going to leave you all today with remembering and reminding you the importance of taking care of you. Um, the true essence of who you really are was being a little girl coming into this world with the experience that you're supposed to have it all. It's not about being here and feeling that you have to sacrifice everything for everybody and losing yourself in the midst of everything. That's not what we're here to do. We're here to experience love, joy, peace, fulfillment, and to be in this high vibrational life, which is what you're worthy and deserving of, of experiencing every day of your life. Thank you so much, Melissa. Thank you so much, all you viewers out there for being here with me today. Thank you. I'm so grateful for you. Thank you.